Welcome, everyone, to the L7C Podcast, My Hero Academia Edition. Today, in the spirit of the month of February and Valentine's Day, we are going to be doing a special My Hero Academia episode for you all today. And we have the My Hero Academia enthusiast, Andrea Alanis. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Martin. How are you? I am doing well, thank you. And like I said in the opening, it's the month of Valentine's Day recording right now. And we are going to have maybe our most lighthearted <laughs> case study-ish type episode. And we are going to be talking about our what couples we would want in the My Hero Academia world. And as the kids say right now, ships. Which people do you ship for, as the kids would say? As the, kid, as the young children would say. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, that was a, new, a newer, newer thing past couple of years. Like, back when we were, like, younger watching anime, that really wasn't a term. Yeah, no, I remember it cropping up when I was watching Avatar, because around that same time, a couple years later, is when I finally got an Instagram, and that's where I think I first saw the term ships and then seeing like but i know i saw people shipping you know naruto characters but i don't think that was a term they just had you know like the couple's names put together like naruhina sasusaku and all that good stuff um but i don't think shipping was a term back then yeah like back then putting those names together for me it was just people trying to make anime people like celebrities because when i was yeah. like when we were younger that's what I mean, now like Bradgelina and yeah, fur and like mm-hmm. all of that. So that's what I thought it was. But now we have shipping, so it's all good. So I guess the way it's going to work, like we each have like some couples that we want to see happen in My Hero Academia when the whole series is over. Some of these are probably going to happen. Some of these are probably never going to happen. <laughs> probably not. But these are our couples that we want to happen. And we have a couple of reasons why we want them to happen. So, Andrew, do you, how do you want, do you want to do, like, save your favorite one for last, do your favorite one first, like, how do you want to do this? I was hoping you knew. Um, I personally, I think what I want to do is I want to save which couples you think are actually, like, going to happen endgame for the very end and talk more about maybe just, I don't want to say lighthearted couples, but more, like, less likely and or just pairings that you think would be good together even though there's not necessarily any solid foundation for them first i think also i know what my list i tried to stay away from people who i'm pretty sure are going to be together who i don't want them to be together but mm-hmm. i mean we'll talk about those as well but i guess i'll start i'll go um okay. with one that i don't think will ever happen i do think would be fantastic from a story perspective And this is branching out way into the future. Uh I literally wrote future on them. Eri and Katsuma. Katsuma is the little boy from Heroes Rising, the second uh, movie. And uh, we all know who Eri is. One of the three main stars of season uh, four. So I think those two would be fantastic uh, together. Uh, they both somehow end up going to UA and then they both talk about their relationship with probably at that time, the new number one hero, um, uh, Midoriya, and they connect mm-hmm. through him and then they just hit it off. And they can also, which is actually funny per a conversation we had off camera yesterday, they can also relate from a trauma sense. Oh, yeah. Um, because both of them were hunted down by big bad villains because of their quirk. So I think those two in the future future would be a pretty good couple. And then if you go from like the in uh, Endeavor route, if they made a child with both their quirks, that kid would be right. off the freaking chain. Right. So that was one of my I, favorite ones. That's really cute. I did not think about going to the kids only because I feel like their personalities are still developing. Mm -hmm. Um, But I like that. That's really cute. I actually, since you brought it up, I don't know why I felt like, because basically you have the three kids that 
Midoriya has impacted directly so far. You have Eri, I'm blanking on his name, you just said him, and then there's um, Katsuma. Katsuma, and then there's uh, Koda, the Mm -hmm. kid with the water quirk and the like red horn hat. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but I feel like him and Eri would be really cute because I feel like he would be, actually, I take that back. They would probably be really good friends because he would probably take on more of a big brother role for her and be very protective over her. For some reason, oh. I just felt like he was a couple years older than both of them. I don't know. Looking why. at it, I think I think he might be. I know he's in that same like age range, but I don't think he's as young as they are. Could you see uh, Koda then being with Katsuma's older sister? I don't think so. I honest, I don't, I don't think so. I think again. Kids are still developing their personalities, like I've already said, but I feel like the two of them are both a little too strong and stubborn. It would be interesting to see them work that out, but I don't think that would be something I'm ready to commit to and say like that would that would happen or that would be really cute. Well, go ahead. Okay, so one of the ones that I personally think would be kind of cute, I didn't see it was a very cursory search, but I didn't see any literature or posts or anything about this, but I kind of really like the idea of Amajiki and Tendo being together. Like, I know it's really big all over the internet for Amajiki to end up with Mirio. I personally don't think there's a romantic component between their relationship. I know there's a big push for more LGBTQIA plus couples in anime especially more mainstream anime and I'm all for it I have a couple of those on my list but I think Amajiki and Muriel have more of a like reverence for each other as friends and an admiration of different attributes that they wish they had but it's not necessarily romantic I think Kendo also has a very sunny disposition has a go-getter attitude like Mirio does. But I also feel like she's a very, I don't want to say nurturing, but a very like caring and understanding character. So I feel like she would be able to help support him, but also be willing to tell him how things are and, you know, level with him. So I just thought that was kind of cute. Again, I don't think there's any interaction between the two of them in the show as of yet. But I think that would, they complement each other. I think Tendo would be able to learn a couple things from Amajiki's kind of more passivity because she's not overly aggressive. She's definitely not. But I think she would appreciate his attitude when she constantly has to deal with, um, shoot, I'm forgetting his name right now, but that kid, I hate the court copier i know you yeah yep yep like i i want her to take a break like i know some people would maybe want to put her with someone to t- like take them down a few notches mm-hmm. but i don't think a relationship should be based on that so i think the two of them would just kind of be really cute together Interesting. uh the other one i had who is also from class 1b uh shinsho and sue i did not think of that that's so adorable i i yep they were together i mean on the first class 1a versus class 1b battle and Mm -hmm. she um the first person outside of a race or head that you see in like trainings like openly say she believes in him and all that stuff Mm -hmm. and we know that anime trope can go a very long way yeah so i felt like that one would be uh something that could potentially maybe happen down the line with more team ups and things like that because i think she would be more um into him than the one guy who was super into her during the fight right so yeah yeah i put sue in a different coupling that i don't think would happen that i think people have popularized for the same kind of more surface level reasons that I have is Sue and Tokoyami. Mm It's kind of the whole like anthropomorph kind of put those two together. However, I do think 
I am a bit of a fan of couples that have some, conf- I don't want to say conflicting, but opposite personality traits to balance each other out. Whereas I feel like Sue overall in general is a very balanced character. Mm-hmm. Again, in general, she is more, I don't want to say optimistic because that's not necessarily true. I feel like she's more easygoing. And has, again, more of a quote unquote sunny or sun personality, whereas Tokoyami has more of a moon personality. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think, I don't know, I think she would be able to help him kind of deal with some of the, I don't want to say backlash of his quirk, but just kind of that struggle with Dark Shadow. I know he's already getting through most of that on his own through his training, which is great. But I think. I don't know. I just feel like she's very easy to talk to and he's not one to really open up, but we've seen them paired up together and they seem to be able to communicate fairly easily, Mm -hmm. but I don't necessarily think that's actually going to happen. You're up. Okay. So one of the ones that I think is likely, but I wouldn't put my money on is Denki and Jiro. Yep. I had that one as well. I love them. I mean, so I just restarted watching uh, My Hero from the beginning with my dad. And so I kind of completely forgot that Denki, like, made a move on Uraraka, like, the first day of school. (laughs) So that was a little out there for me to watch. I was like, oh, oops, okay. But I just like the way that they're very kind of expressive with each other. They tease each other a little bit. They bounce off of each other. Um, I do feel like it's not expressly said, but Jiro seems to be having different like subtle reactions that kind of indicate that she has a crush on him. I don't think we've really seen too much where it's reciprocated. However, I think it could really develop that way. The two of them to me is very much like a, a potentially like a friends to lovers trope. In that there was always, maybe on both, but for just the one side of an interest or attraction. Also, just aesthetically, they both have a very similar aesthetic with their hero costumes. They seem to be more, I guess it's according to say edgy, but, and I think they understand each other a bit. I know Jiro makes fun of Denki quite a lot, but I also see that coming across as her attempt to flirt with him if that makes sense so i like them a lot together do i think it's gonna happen i wouldn't put money on it but i i very strongly hope that it does i have that one my other one as well Uh, another one just from since they've spent a lot of time together off screen that what we would know of would be lamillion and the bubble girl from their old internship with night eye okay just because obviously the sense of humor for both of them is there so they can laugh at each other and with each other and and they've had tons of experience off camera together because mm-hmm. they were of night eye and obviously like that night eye connection i could see something where depending on their futures carrying on that agency and then like like the friends to love everything like you just said and then them getting married because i just don't see uh najira with lamillion i mean it could probably happen but i just don't see it at this time i don't see her with lamillion either i feel like she would be with a character we haven't met yet and or like a random citizen because like i was trying to think of somebody with ida because i feel it is not my personal favorite i he's just not but for whatever reason, when I was trying to think of parents with him, my first thought is like he probably would marry just a regular civilian, maybe even a female police officer or something like that. But I feel like he would need somebody that's very extremely supportive of him and his values because any conflicting any conflicting values for him would not really fly. You know, if she didn't die in the movie. And like she became a good guy. I could see that arrow girl being when Ida. Like if she didn't die. Yeah. And see, like, but she's also an adult. 
Like that is true. She is older. Like she, she. Well, I guess they never expressly said her age, but it's kind of assumed that she's like an adult adult. So like, but it also seemed like she, her. They're both too rigid in their thinking. I don't think that would mix together well, but I I very well could be wrong, of course. I was just thinking of someone who's like super committed and she was super committed to their goals. So like, I feel like it'd be a different commitment to each other, but I just thought of her and like riding the motorcycle or whatever. And then he always has rocket boots. So right. His, his rocket calves, his engine yeah. calves. It could start off with something so stupid that they both like race each other to see who's fastest. And then there we go. Right. Right. You're a, so another one that I think I think just makes me happy for them, if this is true, is Ojiro and Hagakure or Tor- uh, Toru, the invisible girl. I think they'd just be very cute together. It seems like they understand each other. They, I know, have been paired up together a lot. And there seems to be chemistry between the two. Hagakure did initially say something about like being attracted to Shoto because of the whole like mysterious vibe and Ojiro is very he's not mysterious he's very I don't want to say plain in a negative way he's not he's not guarded he's 100% how he is and he's very open and I think through their time together she's realized like that there's more to him than meets the eye and maybe she's attracted to that And obviously him being one of the very first episodes, we see all of the classmates. He does get embarrassed and flustered that she's stripping to be, you know, take full advantage of her quirk. I thought that was adorable. He still turns away anyway, even though technically as soon as the stuff comes off, he has no idea where she is. I think he's very respectful. I like him a lot. So I I really want him to end up with somebody in the end that we can see at least. I don't necessarily 100% believe that they will, but I think they're cute together. And you know, it'd be, it's funny too, like we're naming these couples and all that because the series isn't over. Not nearly. But it's just like, man, like we talked about last time, one of these people could be the freaking traitor. Well, well, one of the bigger theories is I don't, I don't buy it. I personally don't buy it. I don't want to buy it. One of the big theories is that Denki is the traitor. So like, obviously if he is the traitor, like, he and Jiro are basically out the door, at least from what I would understand. But like, I don't want that to be true. <laughs> but yes, that's very, you know, it is dependent on who the traitor is. And honestly, they're about to head into a war, as we saw with Naruto. Sometimes people don't make it out. So like, I mean, <laughs> the fourth great Shinobi war wrecked one of my favorite ships of Nenji and Tenten. Like, that sucked. So, I mean, anything could happen. So I'll throw out my one one teacher one. I think it's one that everyone has talked about at nauseum. Eraser head and miss joke. Yes, I have them too, because I wanted one teacher, like teacher pairing as well. And so I know he's like he's expressed being kind of like fed up with her. But I just I don't know how much of that is expressly true because he does seem to I don't want to say communicate in riddles. He doesn't communicate in riddles. There's just typically more than more to what he's saying than the words themselves. So I don't know. I just think they're cute. It's it's adorable that her quirk is, you know, making people laugh and he will not laugh at her jokes. Who else? Do you, now it's your turn. So I'll go ahead and do one of my, I know people get a lot of flack for shipping these two together. But I honestly don't mind the idea of Bakugo and Kaminari being together. Not Kaminari. Eh, excuse me. That's Denki. I'm sorry. That's not who I'm talking about. Kirishima. Excuse me. Bakugo and Kirishima. Another kind of friends to lovers trope. I also think it would be, I don't want to say helpful, but I think it would be interesting to see a both kind of more predominantly masculine leaning energy characters in a gay relationship. Of course, I don't necessarily think this is actually going to happen, 
I just don't, I just don't think it should get as much hate as it does just because it's a gay ship. So since we're on that, on that, I guess, cause they're over there in the East. It's not really like being gay and all that accepted. Right. So, so I just don't know if they'll, especially in a major, right. I guess a major anime. Cause we forget that they're more catering to right. their audience over there than us. So I don't know if that will ever happen. I don't think it will. Um, I think probably in, I don't want to say generations, like it's never going to happen, but down the line, I think eventually we'll be able to have more mainstream anime even and accepted in the East predominantly. I won't say 100% because it's in the West, it's not 100% acceptable either. But I think in the conversations around this ship, it could make a lot of sense. Kirishima is one of the only characters that Bakugo is willing to, or that he, I don't want to say respects, but what's the word that I'm looking for that he's willing, I guess, to rely on for help. Like when he's getting saved, I, was I mean, say, the fact- let, let guard down a little bit. Right. Right. So, I mean, they're not, at least from what we've seen overly vulnerable with each other, but I think there is something to be said about their friendship being close, even if it doesn't develop into being romantic. Um, I just, personally don't think that ship should get as much hate as it does the other one being bakugo and deku together which made no like sorry no there's too much trauma there there's too much history there's no just i'm sorry no that's a no from me fam (laughs) did you have any other lgbt yes so the other one um is in conflict with one of my you know end game (laughs) ones is Momo and Jiro together, actually. So this is another kind of idea of like friends, the whole friends to lovers. There's conversation online about how Jiro in general kind of gives off a lot of quote unquote bi vibes. I I don't know necessarily what that means, but I think their friendship is really close. I think they do spend a lot of time together I very much do believe their relationship is a friendship. If it, I think it could develop into something more if that is within, I don't know, the realm of possibility in my hero. It should be because technically speaking, there is a, I believe a transgender character in my hero. One of the four like cat themed rescue team is transgender. So And to be to be fair, Sailor Moon also had an openly gay couple, the lesbian couple of Sailor Neptune and Sailor Uranus, that yeah. we censored in the U.S. Yeah, that US. we censored. Yeah, and that was back in the '90s. So, like, I feel like there's a possibility at least for a gay couple, but maybe not right now in this particular anime but yeah that's those are the only two main ones that i've seen that i think i could buy into i don't believe they'll actually happen if either of them did that would be mind-blowing you know i have uh uraraka and froppy that's the one i've seen that's been pretty popular maybe maybe it's a bias i have but i don't quite see it i see them as very strictly friends which is kind of doesn't make sense considering i basically said the same thing about momo and jiru mm-hmm. jiro excuse me i'm not sure what it is i think because momo needs at least at this time additional support than maybe most people would assume i think jiro would provide that in a relationship so I think that could make sense. Whereas Uraraka and Sue, I think are just very, I don't know how to explain it. I just don't really, I don't really see it. I, I think my next one, which I didn't even write down, just popped to in my other category of 
things that are relatable in 2022. The infamous will they, won't they ever make it official? Cameo right. Woods and Mount Lady. Those two, at I forgot what thing they asked Mount Lady if they were dating, and she said no comment, even though they're together all the freaking time. They've been together since like season one, and there's been no comment on it. So that is the typical telling your friends, I don't know what we are. We're talking sort of kind of, but don't want to put labels on it until that or until- because I mean, like. A lot of these heroes, especially those two, since they're more popular, are essentially celebrities. And a lot of celebrities will say no comment because they don't want to they don't want to tell the public yet and or they don't want the public to know because of interference with whatever. So I feel like that's a little bit telling. I did not remember that. I remember. Again, I just rewatched like the first episode. So like that's when they first kind of come into contact with each other and then they team up and their reference as being is it partners that they that they've kind of teamed up together during the um hero ranking Mm -hmm. so i didn't really kind of steer towards dating but it would make sense that she particularly would want to say no comment because a lot of her fans are assumedly male and would want to kind of project and pretend in their minds that they could be with her whereas I mean, which is a lot of things that I believe idols like uh, K-pop, J-pop, whatever idols have to do is that's why they sign those uh, no dating contracts or whatever is so that fans can have the idea that, well, they aren't with anybody else. So maybe, maybe I have a chance with them. And from what I understand, those idols do catch a lot of flack if there is a quote unquote dating scandal that they are actually dating somebody which is kind of sad, but that's cute. I like them. That would be cute. I try. Go ahead. Getting into my end game couples. I actually, my second favorite end game couple is, of course, Shoto Todoroki and Momo Yayorozu. I very much enjoy watching their interactions and the way they support each other and they seem to understand each other without over explaining it seems like Shoto understood kind of her mindset and her reservations when they were teamed up for the exams together the practical exam and was very I mean it was very supportive was very present for her didn't you know, try to minimize how she was feeling or just flat out tell her that she shouldn't feel that way because, oh, I mean, you're super smart, you're super gorgeous, whatever. Just letting her know that I believe in you for X, Y, Z reasons or whatever and letting her do her own thing. I am not a particular fan of the information online that says part of the reason that they should be together or that they quote unquote make a good couple is because they both come from high income families. I I don't really see why that would make them more of a perfect couple per se, but I think they're both very smart. They're both understanding. I think Momo would be able to support and understand and openly communicate with Shoto when he does feel ready to start talking about his trauma and his I mean his whole family dynamic is hard so of course Bakugo and Deku know all about it now since the Todorokis were talking about it when they were over at the the Todoroki household but I mean he hasn't really had a one-on-one conversation with anyone other than you know with Deku during their sports festival fight and I think it's going to be really interesting to see if we actually as an audience get to see him talk to a female friend about all of that because I think that's going to be telling of whether or not that relationship is going to going to become more intimate emotionally and potentially lead to a like actual dating relationship So 
I didn't have them on my thing because I mean it's more than likely going to happen and it just like I don't know because I feel like they only had like one true interaction and it was that thing when they were fighting a racer head like I know you're re-watching it so you could be able to tell me if they've had more interactions but like I know in season four they didn't have anything season five I like they were all watching the fight so it's like you could tell me if they've had more interactions than that no I don't I wouldn't say so I haven't gotten that far I mean I we're we're about to finish season one. So like we have not gotten that far, but I feel like the both of them are very, very observant and very, um, I don't know. I feel like emotionally aware, at least for themselves now with Todoroki, Todoroki in the beginning, not so much, but, and I feel like for them, it, it would, it kind of puts them on equal footing in the relationship and there would need to be mutual support and open communication between the two of them. I, I think it would work out that way, but no, they haven't had a whole ton of obvious interactions. Again, I think the only female subtly having kind of flirtatious indications is Jiro towards Denki. But I don't know. I could see it. I want it to happen. That's also just a little personal thing because I identify with Momo a little bit. <laughs> so far the most out of any of the female characters and Shoto is my favorite male character. So like trying to live vicariously through anime characters, which for some people that live and die by their ships is kind of the point. No, I mean, it makes sense. I think it is going to happen. It's just like, eh, I would be, it'd be a more shocking twist if it didn't happen. Right. I, well, to be to be fair though, they are in high school. Like I know this is an anime, but they are in high school. They can still meet other people. They can they can still interact with other high school students. They could interact with the general public. They could meet other heroes at whatever agency they get hired at, or they start their own hero agency, start dating somebody at that hero agency. Like the world is so much bigger than your high school class. But of course, that's not necessarily how anime works. So so I would say two things like one on because it's kind of what you said earlier, which is like an old trope. And then what you just said currently is like a new thing. So with the old thing, with the money thing, depending on time frame, I mean, that's people got married, not for love, but for the resources. So right. if you have a rich side here, a rich side here, combine the rich side, both families get richer, rinse, wash, repeat. So if the person who ever wrote that were writing that was probably thinking of that. And then the new thing, I mean. Yeah, they're in high school in an anime, but high school is usually the end for anime characters. And then they're like full fledged adults. You only have like some animes talk about like, oh, I want to go to college. To be honest, I think the only anime I've ever heard one of the main characters bring up college was Fruits Basket with Yuki. Fair. He's like yeah. the only person. And I've watched a lot of anime who's brought up like, oh, what are you going to do? after high school oh i'm gonna go i want to go to college like that was like oh my freaking goodness so like I, go ahead i was gonna say the, i haven't watched a lot of slice of life or romance anime lately i've read more i previously read more manga before it and i feel like those stories generally have a little bit more about you know we're we have to go to separate colleges or like how do we do long distance and those are conversations I feel like in more slice of life mm -hmm. animes romance animes versus uh shonen ones especially here because I mean they go to UA high school and they can become pro heroes they don't have to go to exactly. what UA college UA mm -hmm. university like they're so they they wouldn't need to yeah no you're right I just wanted to throw that out there that I feel like other genres mm -hmm. of anime have more of those conversations yeah and then the only thing with the school thing since like an anime high school is like the end and like just trying to relate that to the real world which we, we do on these things if you make high school in our real world like college grad school how hard is it to find someone if you don't find someone in college and grad school <laughs> i mean that's like a real life like, no it is an application <laughs> Obviously, I don't think they have like, I don't even know what character they would midnight Tinder, 
where they have like Tinder named after midnight and she's like, oh my God. Of it, which that actually would be very clever. That, that <laughs> would be, that would, that could be her like side hustle and, or like when she retires, like, yeah. So it's like really hard, like, especially now, which that's all like, like now in 2022, it's a lot harder than like 10, 20 years ago because people like back then, I don't know, had more confidence in like talking to people and all of that. And then now it's all like, okay, you didn't meet someone, blah, 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 you're swiping and all that. Right. So, my, so I guess I'll go to my like big three shout out to the big three of my hero. This one, I, I this is another one. I think it's going to happen. I'd be shocked if it doesn't. Um, my guy from season four, Kirishima and Mina. See, I, I don't they, dislike it. I don't. I don't dislike them together. I think they're cute. I just. They have the most history together since middle school. She inspired right. him. Which right. you don't see often in an anime, the woman inspiring the guy. It's usually the other way around. That's fair. I just. I think. I think because we got that information later for me. Mm-hmm. because all of their interactions had been either minimal or very k- kind of just friend based. Just you didn't really, I felt like you didn't really have that inkling for the two of them until you saw his backstory. And for that reason, I feel like maybe there might be a character that comes down the line that would fit better for her and for him. But I don't really see kind of any, I don't want to say tension because that's probably a strong word i don't know i just don't really see much right now that could change that could very well change i don't dislike them i just i think for the fact that he was thinking about their meeting when he was fighting for his freaking life in season four about to die i think that's pretty like for me that was pretty telling like he could have been thinking about his interactions with bakugo he could have been thinking about his class when he was about to die before he goes red riot super mode. He was thinking about his interactions with Mina in middle school and saying how one day he's going to be a man that like she can respect and then, like that he won't have to apologize to her for and all of that. So that was the reason like you think you think about some of the most important things when you're about to die. That's fair. I feel like that was, I mean, it was an important interaction. That was an important moment in his life. I just, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't, I don't know. I think because they're both very much focused away from each other right now. And they kind of were from the start. I'm not really seeing it. I don't, again, I don't hate it. I like them. It would be cute. But I need to see a little bit more going on between the two of them, I feel like. Like, in a, okay. Well, I guess that makes, it makes sense because of, like, your previous thing that you just said. Because, like, they've had, they have a more deeper connection than Momo and Shoto. But Momo and Shoto are your favorite people. And so you want them together, which makes sense. But I was just like, because Mina and Kirishim, like, Mom, Shoto wasn't thinking about Momo when he was out there getting his ass whooped in those movies. No, no, no. but well, he, I mean, in the latest movie, wasn't he? he no, 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 not not that one. Excuse me. In Heroes Rising, just before he was dying, he was thinking about his training with his dad, who he still very yep. much doesn't really. <laughs> hey, some, uh, again, you think about the most important people when you're about to die, and that's still the most important person in his life. See, but I feel like the key here is the most important lessons. I don't think it's the people. I don't think it's the specific person. It's the lesson taken away that helps them in the moment. Go ahead. Okay. I so I have, I have two more of my top two. So, okay. Well then I'll go ahead and say one that I didn't necessarily mind, which <laughs> is also would bust up my top favorite one. <laughs> So I kind of don't mind the idea of Bakugo and Uraraka being together. I don't mind it. 
if Deku was able to find somebody else, if. But just visually, I had never considered the two of them until I watched the um, the first movie. What was it called? The one with the two like, heroes. That one, yes, with two heroes during the um, that banquet kind of everybody's Ballroom getting dancing formal. where they're yes. dancing together, and everyone yes. was like, "Oh my gosh." So not even that, like, it's not even that because friends can dance together. They, they can, mm-hmm. it's not inherently like, oh my God, those two are going to date. If a guy asks a girl to dance or a girl asks a guy to dance, it just, it, it doesn't have to mean anything. This is not a Disney movie. So for me though, it was the clothing because Bakugo picked out the formal wear between two options since mm-hmm. Kirishima brought an extra for Bakugo. And Bakugo chose the one with the white rose vest. And Uraraka is wearing a white rose in her hair. Of course, he didn't make that choice knowing that. But it was interesting to see that the two of them had some overlap in their clothing. And I mean, <laughs> Deku rolled up like Ron Weasley at the Yule Ball in this oversized, <laughs> kind of poorly, poorly fitted suit and jacket. Like, oh. Deku, but I just and I feel like part of the reason they did that is because they were playing up the whole Izuku Melissa thing. But I don't know it. It for me, it said a lot about dur- like during the sports festival that Bakugo essentially was the only one other than Aizawa, the only one to take Uraraka as a threat seriously. Everybody was very concerned for her, which, again, they care about her. But at the same time, they're essentially writing it off that she's got no chance and that she's going to get creamed. So Deku essentially tries to formulate a plan for her and provide it to her instead of encouraging her own abilities. And just kind of like maybe spitballing ideas with her, he kind of takes it upon himself that I'm going to do this for her whereas Bakugo never once underestimated her and when he was getting all that hate from the fans about like how can you do this to a girl like that's so bad and Aizawa sitting up there he's like no he's taking this fight seriously you all should be ashamed of yourselves for underestimating her because she doesn't have like an overly maybe flashy quirk or physically strong quirk and the fact that she's a girl a cute girl at that so I don't know I just kind of really liked that level of respect coming from Bakugo towards her that he didn't think she was helpless and that he took her seriously so I'll say my number two last because (laughs) since we'll just continue on this I mean this I personally have been on this train since the very beginning with Bakugo and Uraraka because I'm gonna be honest I don't want Uraraka to end up with Midoriya I really don't and the biggest reason like besides the stuff that you said and I wrote this down in all caps on my phone when I was writing who I want to be together Uraraka and Bakugo and I quoting myself is Sasuke and Sakura done the right way yes that that was my number one that that is a good point yes because they are done the right way. It wouldn't be like Sas- Sasuke never like she was obviously like super like just because of his good looks and all this stuff. And he never really like openly like respected her all like that, like at the very beginning. And also with the sports festival thing, too. This is early Bakugo, who's still an asshole. Like he hasn't like he's not he the hasn't season gone through five. Most of his, right. He hasn't gone through most of his character development yet. He's only just been humbled in the first season after seeing Shoto's quirk, after seeing that uh, Izuku could potentially outsmart him in a fight because he's underestimating people. Yeah. And so he's learned he's learned that lesson himself. And of course, in these two examples are both guys. And of course, women in general are ten- generally, you know, um, uh, undervalued is not the right word, um, underestimated, uh, are underestimated. So the fact that he wasn't going to buy into that or take that chance says a lot about his respect for a person's abilities 
Yeah, for someone he like didn't really talk about and all that. So yeah, that was my biggest thing. Sasuke and Sakura done right. No like tr- one person trying to kill the other multiple times, like still <laughs> going back, like a whole bunch of respect established um right at the beginning. Like Sasuke and Sakura's respect wasn't really established until the end. And that's BS because it was at the end, like 500 plus episodes later. This was established like by the 23rd episode and then on a real life thing with them is that it would be because people talk about this like dating people who are like similar like to your family and all that it would be the exact same family dynamic as his family right he would, right he has a personality as his, his, his mom, mom and then she has she has the same personality uraka does as bakugo's dad as the easygoing like relaxed person so it, it'd be the same family dynamic that he'd be comfortable in and it's just like that's my number that is my number one one that i've been saying for ever so wow yeah no i kind of forgot you're a big fan of that i can see it and i don't again i don't mind it i actually kind of like it i just don't know exactly how they would because my number one is is midoriya and uraraka it just is just because at least at this moment, there's still mutual crushing. It's not obvious on Midoriya's end, but it was obvious from the start. Mm-hmm. And then she's kind of just her interactions with him shows her a lot about his character. And so she has now developed feelings for him in that romantic way. And so. I don't I know feel- if it was from the start, though, like. Pushbacking a little bit wise, it's just because she was the and this happens a lot. She was the first girl that he like saw. That's true. And also, too, it kind of helps from like teenage boy hormonal thing. Then the next time you see her, she's like in a skin tight suit showing off like like that shows off her figure and all that. Like once he got past that, it was never like he got his face super red or passed out. Like I feel like if he saw Momo for the first, if that was the first girl he saw. He would have fell in love, like had a crush on her and like vice versa. Mm, I don't think so. And the only reason I feel that way is because. (sighs) Yes. But part of the reason she's the first quote unquote girl that he interacted with, per se, is because she stepped in to help him. So like they met they met the first day of school, though. No, they met during the exam, during the entrance exam, when he almost fell on his face and she caught him. I swore they met at the gate, like, like when he was like first walking to UA. Yeah, no, that's the entrance exam, not the first day of school. Okay. Yeah. 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 So like they haven't even been accepted into the school yet. Right. Um, And then, of course, he ends up saving her from the quote unquote zero point robot. And that's how he gets all his, his, (laughs) his um, hero points. Which was a cop out, but it's okay. (laughs) <laughs> I'll take it. I, I I completely forgot how exactly they scored it that he was going to be able to get in because like obviously I've seen it. I know he gets in. Like, <laughs> but I think so. Yes, he's attracted to her. That she's pretty. He finds her attractive. But I think he also likes her personality. He likes the fact that she, you know helped him even though he was falling on his face she doesn't know him he's a complete stranger but she helped him out and i mean it kind of hurt my heart later on during his like acceptance video where the video of uraka going to president mike is like hey can you give my points to that kid with the messy hair in the english dub says messy hair freckles i don't know how to describe his face because it's kind of plain like But for me, though, that also tells me that her feelings that she's developed over time is because of who he is and their interactions with each other. It's not because she immediately on the outset found him attractive. And I mean, it's theorized. I think there are some studies and stuff out there. I don't know them. But that you become more attractive to the person that you spend a lot of time with and start liking their personality, everything about them becomes more attractive. So while right now Deku's not 
being overtly kind of like, you know, full on blushing, getting stuttery, all of that stuff. He's more comfortable around his female classmates and females in general. But I feel like she's still who he has feelings for. But again, it's kind of that he's focusing on him and what he needs to do to be, you know, the number one hero. And although she has these feelings and she's now acknowledged them, she understands what he needs to do for himself. So she's doing what she needs to do for herself. And I think the writer eventually is going to bring them both back together. So I do, I do think the two of them are going to be a thing. If everything pans out and no one dies. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the main character and the quote unquote main female lead. So they'll end, well, they'll end up together unless it's a Harry Potter swerve. And then it is Bakugo or like Naruto when Sasuke figures this stuff out and gets finally gets with soccer at the end. So with my number two, I do have my number two and it's, it's from heroes. Um, the second movie too. It's actually Midoriya and Melissa. But before I explain why I had other ones with Midoriya, uh, I thought of Midoriya and Sue because they, oh, literally, for sure. they literally had a life or death experience in the first like six episodes together. So right. I thought of that one. And I, I'll shout her out too because she loves him in a strange villainish way. I did think of Midoriya and Toga um, mm. only for the fact that whenever the series ends and she's still like a bad guy and Midoriya hits her with like the talk no jutsu and it completely mm -hmm. changes her ways and then I don't know the final series finale he's about to get attacked by Shigaragi and she takes the hit for him and like instant like that whole thing like yep. she, then she drops away well, you never like saw me as a villain like you always saw some good in me and you're the yeah. only one who believed in me and from the hero side yada yada which I could maybe who knows that could that could be a whole swerve that we are not i would say i'm not prepared for what i i would not be happy with it over some of the other ships with him because i i actually do really like the idea of midoriya and sue i enjoy the fact that she was she felt comfortable enough with him and the rest of the class to voice her um disagreement with the rest of them and i don't remember exactly what the situation was but they were all in the hospital oh it was them well the one outside is when midoriya ida shoto kirishima and momo decided they were gonna go rescue yes. bakugo and yes. she said she didn't agree with it because of like what they've been, I was like, oh, girl, it's been like two seasons. You, you guys will have a lot more to go through. So if you're dissenting on this, it's going to be a long, long series for you. But yes. And then she was crying, asking if things could be the way they once were and all that. Right. Right. But and I also, I mean, she just also has a character that's her, uh, not a character, like personality that seems could be good with multiple people. Mm -hmm. Um. And it could just be that that's true, that she very well could be with a lot of different people. Or it could be that we haven't seen enough of her kind of stronger convictions, kind of like with, that's like with Ida, I feel like his convictions are too strong and too concrete for himself that he would not budge with other people. Whereas her, I feel like she does have, you know, the strength to disagree and voice that disagreement. Right. But I feel like in general, she's kind of more of a go with the flow. I'll kind of go with what's going on type of person. I think if we saw a little bit more conviction and I don't want to say rigidity because that makes it sound bad, but just certain things that would be a no to her other than being overly pervy because that seems to be one of her only major things because she's one of the ones that's openly against Mineta. That's true. So... But yeah, so the reason I had Melissa and Midoriya, same reason, like with the Bakugo and uh, War Rocket thing from the first movie, is they, I wrote down no secrets from the beginning. Right. I mean, like in real life, when you're dating someone, there's a lot of things you do not tell them from the beginning, especially your deepest, darkest things, because you don't want to scare them off. You don't know if you can actually like 
trust this person, et cetera, et cetera. From the very beginning, I mean, she's like 18 and he's like 15. So it's not really that big an age difference. Right. Like once right. they become like adults, mm-hmm. but she knows about All Might Secret. She knows about One for All. Like, so Midoriya, you already, you already skipped that huge thing that when he tells, like once the other people find out, like we're rocking all that. Are we going to have the, I can't believe you never trusted me enough to tell me, tell me. argument or deal or whatever, mm-hmm. but she's already way past that. And also like in that movie, he, I'm on the inspiration part. He gets inspired by her because she is quirkless like he mm-hmm. was, which is a whole deeper connection right. that he could talk with her about that. He can't talk with any of the other women we're rocket included so but she's still heroic and she still helps in her own way with the tech and Mm -hmm. all of that and it's just like and obviously i mean she's all might approved so so asking for like marriage and all that stuff but i just felt like especially with the quirkless thing and the no secrets like just think about it like if you date, if you were able to date someone and you could start off with no secrets at the very beginning, it just alleviates a lot of things off of your like emotional heart and mind and all of that. Right. So that's why it, it won't happen. I do think that she'll be very prominent in his life, like going forward. Unfortunately, I think it'll probably be more of a big sister type yeah. role, but yeah. that's just because of the no, um, no secrets and being able to relate with someone who was quirk like quirkless and all of that. And then he can ask, like, would you have taken like if all my thing? Like, cause right. he never thought he could be like useful, useful. Like she was from the jump born quirkless. It's like, oh, I'm gonna be like my dad. I'm gonna help the greatest hero in the world. And they could repeat that same process. But that was my number two once Bakugo was marrying. Uraka and Kirishima was the best man, and Deku and Shoto were groomsmen, which I I would love to plan that wedding. I'd love to be the wedding planner for that wedding. I honestly would love to be a fly on the wall at that bachelor party. That would be so freaking funny. (laughs) That would be um, crazy. I wish there was someone, just because I like her, I wish there was someone who was a little, well, no, he's never met her, but I think Lamillion with like Shoto's older sister would have been funny. Right. That'd be so adorable. That'd be so cute. Especially that like coming, like, like when she has like her classes and all that. And mm. he's gonna be, he's gonna be a very, very, very top hero coming in, making like those little kids laugh and all that. Like I could see that. It's just they've never right. They've met. never met. And right, just just like Amajiki and Tendo, <laughs> at least as far as we know, we don't think they know each other at all. So or and I, don't I don't know, if, do. and I don't know if Endeavor would actually approve because, like, and I quote from a racer head, he said Lemillion was closer to being the number one hero after All Might retired at that point in time, and that's what all other heroes alive, Endeavor included. You might, that's get, a fair. Little, you might get a little jealous, but that was fun. Do you have any other? Oh, I did think <sighs> of one just because I love both their characters, and they would probably never get together. Um, Uraka and Sue's mentor, the dragon lady. Yeah. And Blue Genus, just because I need my guy Blue Genus to be with somebody because he's the guy. He's That's- awesome. I, I had not considered that. But I, I just don't know. I don't know either of them enough to really put them together. But I do want to see more of the whole, more of the pro heroes like in relationships together. I also or thought just of that what their for- relationships are like. Uraka's mentor, Bakugo's mentor. Uh, so we're just going to continue the line. I mean. I mean, he's the one person he is waiting to see face to face until he until he announces the world his hero name. So he is a true. big deal in Bakugo's life. That's true. That's very true. I, I know there's a lot of talk about um, Hawks and what's her name? The the bunny hero. Um, Mirko. Mirko. Yeah. Yes. Her. I know there's a lot of like conjecture about the two of them. I honestly don't really see it. I don't see her being with anyone. 
See, that's kind of the impression that I get as well. And that's also why, like, I didn't really come up with any ships for Shinsho because I don't really see him. I see him being very comfortable on his own, mm -hmm. just like Aizawa. So, like, I don't want to turn him exactly into a, a baby eraser head, but I could see that maybe he would stay on his own. Um, and honestly, I wonder at the end of this whole series if, if part of the reason Deku, you know, becomes the greatest hero of all time or whatever is because he does have to make that final self-sacrifice. And so then it, technically he him. doesn't, he doesn't end up with anybody. Mm -hmm. But we'll see. Andrew, anything else? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think that's, ev I literally talked about everybody on yeah <laughs> yeah i don't think i have anyone left on mine as well i said my top ones as well so thank you everyone for listening to the valentine's day ship edition of the l7c podcast my hero academia edition i didn't say at the beginning i did say on our last one we were going to do the talk about the women of my hero academia we're actually going to do that next one because since next month has international women's day we felt like that one would be better for that month since it'll probably be a little bit, probably more serious than this one. Cause like on the last preview, we talked about like, if you take out the women, you can still continue the story. No problem, which is it's a, a problem. problem. <laughs> and then we'll be talking about that. The good, bad, like the, what they're doing good, what's doing bad. And then we do, we will be trying to rank up to season end of season five, the strongest non-pro hero women in my hero academia yes Which, that would be a great time and with that being said thank you everyone for listening to the l7c podcast you guys take care thank you for listening to this episode of the l7c podcast be sure to like rate review and subscribe to the channel follow us on all social media platforms and we'll be talking to you guys soon take care